Thanks for joining us for tonight's Tile SDM Podcast Extra. We are proudly sponsored by ZCZ Films and footcoaching.com for all of your FC24 and soon to be FC25 coaching needs. Head over to footcoaching.com for more information or you can listen to the Foot in Review podcast. Big thank you to all of our sponsors as always and all of you for listening. The Tilehurst End Podcast by Reading fans for Reading fans. Hello everybody and welcome along to our first Tilehurst End Podcast Extra of the new season. My name is Dan Wimbush, otherwise known as Wimby. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, whether you are a returning listener or you're listening for the very first time. Welcome along. If you are new to this show, what we are is, you know, we are after dinner mint, you know, with that little uh, free shot you get at the end of a meal uh, to follow on for the excellent work that Ben and Ross do over on the main podcast. We just kind of give you those little bit of extra tidbits um, throughout the season. There's no real schedule to this show. We just kind of pop up whenever the, you know, the mood takes us and to do so. I am joined once again, as I was for most of last season, by Andy Preston and James Earnshaw. Gents, how are the two of you? How has your summer been? I'll start with you, James. Yeah, yeah, good cheers. Had a chance to have a, a holiday and and relax and, you know, get off of the, the Reading train. Thankfully, well, it depends how you're looking at it. Thankfully, I didn't miss anything. Uh, I'd quite like to have missed something, really, if there's stuff going on, but... Here we are, and uh, no, all refreshed and ready to go again for another roller coaster year, no doubt. And just for the benefit of those who might be tuning in for first, I'm just kind of explain who you are and how uh, where you fit into this Reading universe. Yeah, so I'm uh, the lead, well, the the sports journalist for the Reading Chronicle newspaper. So uh, home and away Reading games, and yeah, all things all things Royals. Excellent stuff. And Andy, if you just want to reintroduce yourself as well and let us know how your son was as well. Yeah, very good, thanks. Uh, it's been busy for me work-wise. Um, so I was previously sports reporter of uh, Woking and, and Reading Today, uh, now editor of both titles, but um, still straddling across the sports section. So still keeping up with Reading, thankfully. Um, and yeah, looking forward to the new season. Well, very big congratulations on your new role. Hope all is going well. Let's let's get into it because the big question every single person that's listening to the show, if you're a Reading fan, is going to be interested in is, is this takeover happening? What's the latest with it? Should we be concerned? James, I'm going to put this first question to you. I, I kind of prepped you off air. But if 10 <laughs> is, I'm you know completely losing it. I, I can't sleep. I'm so worried. And one is, I'm completely, absolutely chill about this. Where do you sit on the takeover right now? <laughs> yeah, I explained to you, it was uh, it, it varies, it fluctuates daily depending on my moods when I wake up. Uh, I know we're kind of supposed to be the ones that are supposed to have all the answers, but the bottom line is everybody was fully expecting it to have been and gone by now. And the truth is there's no one who's coming out from the club as to why there is no yet takeover. Um, keep plugging away daily and asking the same people and... Um, yeah, the bottom line is it's imminent and, and soon, just how soon nobody knows and nobody knows why it's not happened yet is uh, the boring but uh, horrible answer to have to admit. Yeah, I should caveat as well that we're recording this on uh, Wednesday, the 28th of August, around about eight o'clock. So inevitably we'll get news breaking about 9.30 just as we all go off to uh, enjoy our dinners. Um, but Andy, what about you? Where do you kind of see this? Are you kind of in the same boat and your understanding for where this takeover is and, and what's your kind of concern or, or not concern level? Yeah, I must admit, um, probably starting to get a bit more concerned now, but that's not really based on any real information coming out from the club that's just my own personal view um just throughout the whole summer i think the longer it's gone on everyone's been getting more frustrated understandably so um yeah as far as i understand it's just boring technical money shy the deal that's not gone through yet but um yeah the longer it goes on the more frustrating the wait gets and obviously people are very anxious about it and um it's a situation that should have been resolved a long time ago. Um, you know, in an ideal world, we would have had the whole pre-season to plan and a transfer window to bring in players, albeit only loans and free agents, but they would have helped a lot. Um, and now we're, what, one, two days away from the transfer window shutting and uh, nothing being done. So, um, yeah, that will leave Reading in a difficult, difficult position. 
Yeah, look, I just want to drill down onto that last little point because I know fans will be gleaming for any tiny nuggets. I mean, James, is there anything either on or off the record that you've heard that is making you think that this might, you know, we might be in serious trouble with this? Or is it just a case of, as Andy said, it's just kind of going through the motions at the moment? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing sort of too major. Um, you know, I'm still getting the odd, it could be this day, it could be this day, it could be this day. But the bottom line is nobody seems to know with any real certainty. Um, obviously, I was briefed um, and, and, you know, all of the staff were braced for it to have been last week, you know, when I came off my holiday and and kind of dropped it and uh, looking like I've got a bit of egg on my face now. But as far as I'm aware, everything was set up and ready for, for that to be the day. And obviously, something last minute has, has caused a hitch. Um but yeah, as far as far as I'm aware, there's nothing too major or concerning that we should be worried about. I think it's just a matter of uh, crossing the eyes and, and crossing the eyes, dotting the eyes and crossing the t's. But you know, until it's done and, and written on that paper, then obviously there's going to always be that underlying fear that something could crop up. Yeah, and Andy, it's worth sort of again reaching to everybody out there that you know this is a complicated process and, and takeovers across. It's not just at Reading this has happened with it's happened with plenty, and even with Reading in with our previous couple of takeovers there have been snags, have been delays and stuff in the past. So again, no news isn't necessarily bad news in this scenario. No, exactly. These things always take. Well, they seem to take such a long time, and there's obviously very complicated parts of the deal that are way above my head. <laughs> I don't understand and uh, have to get ratified by certain people. Um, but yeah, understandably, it's it's very frustrating for everyone. I think the big saving grace across the whole summer is that Ruben Sellers is still here. Um, I think, you know, to take any indication from that, ha- had there been bad signs that he had seen throughout his months, I think he would have walked away. And um, yeah, I had genuine concerns at the end of last season that there was a possibility he, he might walk away. Um, so thankfully we're in a situation where he's still here. Uh, I assume he, well, I know for a fact he'll be very frustrated that it's, it's not been done yet, but um, he's put up with so much throughout his tenure already that um, I think he's now just waiting it out until the good times can be around the corner and he can, you know, run a football club that runs functionally. Yeah, and look, it's the, the, you know we, we're talking about this as if you know it's it's very close and imminent. It's worth again, so people have not been following in in close enough detail. I mean, I'm sure most people know, but it is the Coeg family that are heavily rumoured to be spearheading this whole takeover that could be announced literally any day now. I mean, James, what what's been your kind of vibe from sort of the research you've done onto our prospective new owners? Are you optimistic about the future? Pretty pretty optimistic. I mean, he's he's very American, <laughs> and that's probably been so far kind of to his detriment with the whole kind of uh, PR that's gone around the takeover and sort of how close he kind of made it made it to be to fans. And obviously that's got people worried and concerned with sort of, um, you know, everyone expecting it to be daily and, and him kind of telling fans it's going to be so soon and doing all the pictures on the pitch. And, you know, it was any second and, and now, now it's looking frustrating and, and looking a bit silly. But um, no, ultimately, he's a businessman um, and, you know, he's shrewd. He's going to make decisions that, you know, let's face it, probably aren't going to please everybody. That's no owner's going to going to please everybody. But um, after what we've had to endure under under die, I think, um, you know, anyone will take what we can get and uh, have a, a, a factory reset and go again, you know, as a, as a stable club, um, you know, with, with incomings and, and outgoings a bit more balanced. Yeah, and Andy, what are the kind of vibes have you been getting uh, from this whole process so far? And the little bits, you know, we've seen people linked to the consortium as well. Uh, Joe Jacobson, the former Wickham left back, heavily rumoured. Uh, he's been asked directly about, you know, his involvement. I mean, how are you looking at the, this whole operation so far? Yeah, I think the biggest indication we can take is what he did at Wickham in his five years there. Um, obviously, he's, I don't think he's going to come in and splash a lot of cash. Um, I think at Wickham, you know, he ran on a tight, very tight budget, but, you know, they managed to get promoted from League One to the Championship for one of those seasons. Um, and I think all the Reading need right now for the next few years is just stability. That's something that Sellers has hi- highlighted as well when we spoke to him last week, that, you know, the expectation shouldn't be too high about this season because basically what they need is a year of, you know, no off, off-field troubles, Um give him time to work with the squad for another year and then see what they can build for, for next year. Um, Cause you know, there's a very young group here. It's a small squad as well. Um, 
So yeah, it's one that probably does need investment in the future. That's not going to come anytime soon, realistically. But um, yeah, I think some of the concerns from the fans about what's going to happen with Bearwood and the academy. Um, and, you know, there's been talks of cost cutting around the club and I expect there will be some kind of cost cutting because the operating costs of Bearwood are so high. Hopefully, um, the the future of the academy is something that will be protected because everyone knows at Reading how important the academy has been and should be for the future because, you know, we've seen it throughout the years and last year how important the academy was and without that production line, there's, um, you know, Reading's a much less attractive club. Indeed. Well, look, let's move on. You know, you touched on investment and potential signings. I mean, this is all kind of linked in. The transfer deadline is on Friday night. We're sitting here recording this on Wednesday. So you've got around 48 hours to go. Of course, all related to this takeover. But I mean, James, where just explain to people where Reading are actually at, regardless of this takeover in terms of what they are allowed to do in these last two days of the window? Because there's been lots of confusion about what embargoes we're under, who can we sign, etc. Again, what's your understanding of, of the business that Reading are allowed to do? Should, you know, should this takeover happen, you know, in the next 48 hours? Yeah, so my understanding currently is regardless of any takeover, the EFL, or at least the club are in discussions with the EFL as of Wrexham on Saturday. So obviously we speak to Ruben tomorrow, so we'll get a bit more on that, uh, more, more up-to-date information tomorrow. But they were trying to basically have a one in one out with Aziz going um, and, and bringing in a replacement, seeing as how thin the squad is already. And Ruben seemed relatively confident as of Saturday that this would be possible, meaning there should be hopefully at least one incoming this summer. Um, and then other than that, providing the takeover goes through in the next 48 hours, then it should be freeze and loans as it has been for the last, <laughs> what feels like decades, but I don't think it is a decade. Uh, and then, yeah, as of next year, then um, it should be hopefully back to normal. So is it from January? Because there was we're given the, given this three window penalty for failing to pay HMRC. Does that expire at the end of this window, or does it expire at the end of the next window? There's lots of confusion around that, and uh, to be honest, the people, different people I talk to at the club seem to have different <laughs> ideas as well. <laughs> so it doesn't seem to be one exact date. So um, I think January might be. Might be okay, but um, I, without any certain, uncer- without any clarity, let's just say next summer. Yeah, and Andy, even if the takeover doesn't get done um, before Friday's transfer deadline day, again, not all is lost in terms of running in, bringing in reinforcements, is there? Yeah, exactly that. You know, the free free agents market is one they would have been looking at all summer, and um, you know, I guess as the summer progresses, that dwindles down your options because you know players are keen to find clubs during pre-season understandably um yeah obviously it's just with the loans um that they've got a deadline for and unfortunately there's quite a few that would have been very suitable um one in particular Don Ballard I know the club were very keen to make that happen and he was keen to make that happen too and you know understandably from his point of view he just couldn't wait any longer and had to had to find a club and um is now at Blackpool but um he would have been a good fit um, but yeah, I think that there are still targets they'll have uh, that from free agents market. So, you know, fingers crossed, even if the takeover doesn't go through in the next few days, there will be some reinforcements in the months ahead. Yeah, James, I noticed that you reposted uh, the PFA are putting out a, a free agents team that's playing mm-hmm. a friendly or, or did. I can't remember if the game's actually happened yet against Cambridge. Um, some massive names on that list. The likes of Dwight Gale, former running player, Michael Hector, Nesta Guinness Walker in there as well. So there is plenty of names out there for Reading to sign, you know, should the takeover not get done in time. But I mean, are there any names that you've heard in the frame, either for this one in, one out, or for, you know, over these next couple of days and weeks? Uh no, not particularly. Not any specific names as of yet. Um obviously they've I've seen the the is it Shem Campbell doing the rounds on, on social media and um, you know, there's definitely a, a short list of players that have been drawn up. I know the recruitment team have been working throughout the summer, uh, obviously hoping that they'd be able to spring into action sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, as of right now, um, hopefully hopefully one in, in the next couple of days, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, Andy, again, any names you've heard? And also, what about outgoings? I mean, we've saw Femi Aziz go a little bit unexpected there, but Reading, you know, claiming a significant fee for that as well. So any names you've heard on the ins and or any possible outs? 
Uh, there haven't been any specific names. Uh, all the ones I had um, in terms of incomings were loans, like Campbell, like uh, James mentioned just now. Don Ballard was the one I'd had pretty much all summer. Um, other than that, there haven't been any real concrete links. Um, in terms of outgoings, I wouldn't expect there to be any big departures, but I guess you can't rule it out until the window is absolutely shut. Uh, in terms of Aziz, I think you know there were there were quite a few clubs interested and um, bids floating about for the last couple of months. And um, yeah, I think that what you know it's a big loss for the club. It was fantastic last season, um, but you know the consolation with that is that the club did manage to get a fee and after triggering, triggering that option um, in the summer to extend his contract. So it, it could have been worse. Losing him on a, on a free would have been a bit of a disaster, really. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully, you know, well, I'm sure Ruben will have a whole list of names that he's got from the free agents market that he wants to bring in. I think definitely an Aziz replacement is priority. Um, and also you look at left back, um, you look pretty short at the moment. You know, Dorset is a, is the main choice there, but you know, by trade isn't actually a left back, although he did play there last season. Um so I expect there's a few names, a few names floating about. Yeah, James, what did you make of the Aziz departure? Do you think this was inevitable or do you just kind of think that the club got caught off almost off guard by an offer too good to refuse? I think looking <laughs> looking at the reported fee, I think a million quid's a, a, a very good whack for for you know a player out of contract in League One at the end of the season. Um, you know, he was heavily linked with moving in January. Um and obviously he kind of missed the um the first two games of the season. So it kinda of did feel inevitable. Um obviously it's sad to see him go, but I think the club have, have for the first time in a long time made quite a good financial decision and, and taken the money, which um, you know, is what we've been crying out for the club to do for for most of Dye's reign. Um so I don't think we can be too too fussy. Um but no, it 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 kind of felt inevitable and the writing was on the wall, I think, for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, real shame to see him go, uh, just in terms of, obviously this season, the, the limited position we're in, in terms of bringing in reinforcements. But yes, yeah, that bittersweetness of, of finally, we're doing things as we should do, you know, cashing in on players at the time when we can get good fees for them. And that million quid, you know, depending on how long this takeover drags out, it could be vital funds just in terms of a lifeline to the football club. So we can't discredit that as well. Um, you know, that, that was the difference between the club being in existence around a million quid, wasn't it? They were trying to find around March, April time last year. So, look, I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. But at the bo- bottom line is, until this takeover gets done, who knows how much cash we'll need and when. Let's move on then to the present and what, you know, the players that are at the club. I mean, Andy, still a couple of players nursing injuries, big players as well. The captain, Andy Yidom, one of those players. Harvey Nibs out as well. I remember Kamara another who's had to miss game time. I mean, where are we looking heading into this weekend's game with Charlton on the injury front? Yeah, we'll be getting an update from Ruben Sellers tomorrow, but um, I wouldn't expect any of them to be back for that game, to be honest. Uh, Nibs, I think, is probably still a couple of weeks away. Uh, Andy Idom's knee injury is a bit more unpredictable. You know, I think they were quite reluctant to give a time frame, um, considering the previous problems he's had, he's had with his knee and failed surgeries. Um yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that be more of a long-term one. Hopefully not, because he's such an important part of the team. But um, yeah, I wouldn't expect him back anytime soon. With Kamara, hopefully that's more short-term. Potentially he'll be back for the weekend, but we'll have to get an update on that tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, James, any again, especially with the, the depth of squad at the moment, all three of them will be a massive boost. Although, you know, does would Andy Yudon get straight back into the team for you? Uh, yeah, I think you'd have to for the experience and for... I think that game's got under his belt, and you know I thought last season he actually had quite you know a pretty good year. Um, so yeah, you know he definitely would, but obviously he'd need weeks to to rehab and to build his fitness up. Maybe a, I don't know a couple of games in the twenty ones or, or some kind of uh, fitness matches because you know the age he's getting to now, he might break down more often than than he might have done you know seven or eight years ago. Um, but you know they're they're digging on in there with the players that they've got and. Um, that's all it seems to be at the minute, taking it week by week and, and reassessing and going again. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, James. I mean, if you look at the atmosphere around the club, just a week just a week ago, really, after you know that Wigan victory at home, 
you know, we beat West Ham in the NFL trophy as well. You know, it looked like the takeover was getting done. And all of a sudden, you know, you kind of get these bang, bang, bang kind of things of Z's getting sold, takeover being delayed, getting absolutely thumped at Wrexham as well. I mean, just overall, what have you made at the start of the season, the, the potential of this squad and this unit? I mean, where are your eyes looking? Are your eyes looking towards that top six or are you still looking over your shoulder towards that bottom six right now? Yeah, 24 hours is a long time in football, never mind a week. Um, <laughs> but I think we've seen the best and possibly the worst of Reading, I think, so far this season. We've seen what they're capable of. Birmingham, they blew away for a good 75 minutes. And, uh, you know, again, Wigan weren't, you know, a ma- weren't a match for Reading in, in, the, in the first home game. But then equally, we've seen that as the games build up and, and as the depth becomes a bit of an issue, then teams, you know, there are holes for the teams to attack. And Wrexham were just... So effective, reminded us, reminded, reminded me of us under like Brian McDermott back when we didn't have to play nine or ten out of ten every week, but just effective. And they were better than us all over the park on the day. And um, you know that's that's this team is going to have games like that in them because they're just a quite inexperienced and b they're going to be absolutely shattered um, as the season progresses. So um, you know I, I'm expecting plenty of inconsistencies, maybe a few good runs and then a few you know maybe not so good runs. But ultimately, I think will be more than you know more than a match to, to build on on last season's finish and maybe push towards top top of bottom half uh, mid table. I think we'd all take that little bit of stability. I think if we can just get through a season without a points deduction. I think that's the starting point. I think that's the bare minimum that Reading Football Club need to be aiming for this season. Um, which is a phrase I, I wouldn't have believed um, when I stepped down hosting the sh- the main show six seven years ago now. Um, but Andy, I mean, how do you? You know, do you enjoy watching this team? Are you enjoying what the process under Ruben Sellers, or are you still just, you know, are you kind of in waiting mode for for better things? Yeah, I think it has been enjoyable football. Um, I think you can see the process that they've gone through since last season, and you know they're building on that week by week. And I think they already let, look a better team than they did last season. Um, you know, going into that Birmingham game, I think expectations were quite low. Um, considering what Birmingham have done in the summer. And that's the most impressive performance I've seen from a Reading team in a long time. Like James said, for 75 minutes, Reading were the better team. And, um, you know, we're very unlucky not to come come away of a win. Um, but I think the start of the season has been largely pre- pretty positive. Um, obviously, the win against Wigan, um, an impressive performance. And I think the likes of Ben Elliott, you're seeing the progress that some of these young players are making. I think... He's been a standout ever since he's been moved centrally um, and hopefully he can keep growing. You know, I think it'd be unrealistic to expect too much from this team and from Ruben Sellers because he's not got a big squad to work with. But, um, you know, I think Reading are probably only two or three good players away from being able to challenge in the top six because you see the way they're able to compete with Birmingham um, who are definitely going to be one, one of the better teams in the league this year. As, at least they should be for the money they spent. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's probably going to be a mid-table uh, stability season for Reading. I think that's <laughs> as much as you can ask sellers to do. Um, but I, I wouldn't see them being a rele- in a relegation battle if there's no kind of points reduction. So I think they've got more than enough quality for that. Yeah, I was just going to ask you both as well. I mean, we've seen a lot of academy players again coming through, again, stressing the great work that Noel Hunt and the rest of the academy staff have done. They deserve such a a huge pat on the back as well for you know producing these players as you you mentioned James continuing this pathway going. I mean James for you out of the sort of newer faces that we've seen or been given a bit more minutes, are there any that are particularly exciting for you? Uh, <clears throat> in pre season, I really thought Carney was going to be the, the Nelson Abbey breakthrough of uh, of this season. Obviously, he's had a bit of a setback with Colchester being subbed after half an hour or so, um, but he's going to learn from it. And um, he's got all of the raw materials that he needs to, to really sort of build and and be a solid defender. Um, so obviously, with as as twenty ones games and Papa John games and um, you know Reading in Europe as, as European games progress, I'm sure they'll they'll build. A candy was one I watched in the twenty ones a lot last year and thought he would be the one that would come up, but I'm not quite sure his end product's just there yet. But with Kamara being off and Femi being off, then who knows? There might be a a, a good run for him to to build himself into this team. Um, but yeah, they, they, they were my two. And Andy, what about yourself? Anybody you particularly enjoyed seeing come through this season? Yeah, Adrian Akande was the name I was going to pick out. Um, like James mentioned, for the 21s, I think he was excellent last season. 
um, in that in that playoff run at the back and back end of last season. He was so important for Noel Hunt's team. Um, you know, he got handed his League One debut last weekend, and I think he had a mixed game, but there were some good signs there. Uh, he's technically very good, very quick. Um, yeah, like James mentioned, end product is going to be a problem for a lot of young players, but hopefully that will come in time. Um, I think another name to mention as well, one that we've seen in the senior team last season a little bit, was Jaden Wareham. Um, I think there's a lot of quality there. Uh, I think he'll be used quite a lot this season. And, you know, right now, the Reading squad, it's only Sam Smith in front of him, really, for that central striking role, if you've got Kelvin out wide. Um, so, yeah, hopefully he'll get a lot of minutes um, and can contribute with some goals as well. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, look, I think for me, it's been one of the, the real... <laughs> probably the only positive well two positives that have come out of this whole ordeal that we've been going through as a football club over the past couple of years is one it's been great to see the fans come together for all of the various pushes protests fundraising things you know really reminding us all of of what the football club means to us and the, the power we have as a fan base together but also yeah seeing this young team come through seeing Ruben Sellers given time and I'll hold my hands up I was one of those people that around October November time was saying look I think this guy's out of his depth um, I felt sorry for him. I thought he's been put into this situation and it's just too big for him. And full credit, th- this is the reason why I'm not a director of football and I'm not a chairman, uh, amongst other reasons, a-, a lack of money being one of them. But um, he's got to prove me and a lot of people absolutely wrong. He's shown real determination. He's become one of the most, you know, we talked. you talked about it earlier, Andy, it's, you know, the linchpin of this operation, keeping him has been one of the big things we've been able to do. So it's been delighted to see him have this chance to build a club and build the team sort of in his image. Uh, and they have been playing really nice football. I mean, the pressing and the work rate at Birmingham was fantastic. And like you say, the Wigan game, equally fantastic as well. Uh, and to get the results as well and some promising performance, even in the Cup. I know we lost to Colchester, but still losing on pens is, uh, again, I, I suppose it's not a lottery after what we learned about the, uh, the Euros and stuff this summer. But anyway, I think that's going to just about wrap up our thoughts and our show again it's we just like to keep things brief you know it's a little it's a little extra it's that after you know the after dinner mint you know that that little one extra thing you have after your main show because ben and ross are going to be dropping an episode within hours of the show being released so they'll have more deeper thoughts and go into much more analysis on the wrexham game and their thoughts on the takeover everything going on around the club so please tune in for that but before i let you both go let's get some plugs in where people can follow your work uh james starting with you uh, yeah, so the Reading Chronicle is obviously the website, and uh, for my Twitter, it is uh, James underscore E eighteen seventy one. And Andy, what about yourself? Uh, you can find all my work at Reading Today online, and um, I'm on Twitter at Andy Preston ninety six. The same on Instagram too. Either of you got big deadline day plans, James? You're going to be uh, you're going to be outside the stadium running a blog. Well, normally I have my blog till 11 o'clock, but obviously depending on how the next 48 hours go, I might be able to have an early night ahead of Oasis tickets on Saturday morning. So uh, <laughs> we'll have to see how that goes. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll see you in the queue, my friend. And have you got any deadline day plans for the yeah, websites? Yeah, I'll, I'll pitch myself outside Bearwood just in case. Um, I'm sure at the very least Rob, Rob Kuhig might be um, hanging around there, hopefully. Excellent. Uh, makes me long for the days of, uh, what was it, Bushwatch? with uh, Jacob South Klein, bless him. Um, seeing the likes of Yakuba and stuff arrive. But anyway, hopefully such happier times in terms of, you know, getting a buzz around deadline days and who we might sign and things like that are just around the corner. So we'll take a big deep breath, try and keep, you know, as calm as possible um, over these next few, hopefully days rather than weeks and months. But look, gents, I'm very much hoping that by the next time the three of us get together, um, we will have new owners. We will have a new era at this football club. Um, But until then, again, thank you both um, and all of your staff and and everybody else for keeping us informed, doing doing the hard yards. and, uh, And again, for appearing on the show tonight. It's been much appreciated. Cheers for having me. Thank you. Excellent. As I said, we will be back uh, in a few weeks' time, I imagine, for a podcast extra. Again, stay tuned to the feed. Again, Ross and Ben will be back with the next episode of the main show. And of course, thetalisend.com or .co.uk for all the latest content, loads of great articles going up, of course, every game as well. So head over and at the Talist End on X and Facebook and wherever you ingest your media these days. In the meantime, that is it for us. One last thing to say, come on, you ours. Get social with the boys. Find them on Twitter at the Tarhurst End and Facebook.com forward slash the Tarhurst End.